Hi guys, Steph here. Yes, it is moi, it is me. No hands today, until a little bit later in the video. <laughs> but um, yeah, the reason today for this particular video, some of you would have watched my uh, previous video regarding the Ranga pen and wonder, hmm, what is it he's going to be doing? Well, recently I received this um, this parcel from Japan and it's all part of the project that I'll be doing just out of interest. The nice thing about this parcel, it was sent on the 15th and I received it on the 22nd so a week for this parcel to come from Japan. How good is that? Excellent. So let's open the parcel Let's have a look inside, see what we've got. So what we've got inside. First time I've seen it, so yeah, I'm quite excited. Incidentally, this is uh, the first parcel. Uh, I actually ordered some other things as well, which I'm waiting for, for the parcel to arrive as well. So, what is it? that we're going to be doing. What is this new project? <laughs> Let's give you a clue. Ah, look at that. So first of all, we've got a little strip of abalone shell. If I turn it round there, we've got a little strip of pearl shell as well. Let's take the paper, throw it to one side. And what do we have here? Now this little box here, if I open it up, look at that. If I remember rightly, that is what is commonly known as Tanako powder. It's actually a polishing powder. Looks quite a lot there, so I'm sure that's gonna last me for quite a while. Also in the box are these sheets. I'm not too sure what they are, whether they're a paper or a tissue, whatever. But these, well, I'll tell you in a moment what they are. And last but not least, I think that's it, the three here. What we've got here is Japanese Hiroshi or Urushi. So there you go. That is my next project. I'm going to be trying to lacquer some fountain pens in Japanese Urushi. So I've got the Shashima Urushi. I've also got the Kuru Nakuri lacquer. And I believe I've got Kijomi lacquer, which is the, the end one. Now what I've actually done, I believe these may be good enough for three, three kinds of lacquers. There's lots of different lacquers, there's coloured lacquers, there's lacquers for different techniques. What I'm doing, as I say, it's a new project, so these are quite expensive. So what I've decided, I've got just the three what I think are the basic lacquers um, one being if you like an undercoat or a base layer one being sort of the intermediate or the middle layer and the last one as I just mentioned this I think it's the Kijomi which is the final layer which gives you that lovely polished glossy look so incidentally yes what I forgot to say this particular thing here is the paper. It's a paper that allows me to sort of sieve, if you like, any impurities from the lacquers. Okay, so what we do, we, we put it in between the paper, we, we screw it up and we sieve the lacquer from this special paper. And as I say, we've got the, I believe that's called the Tanako powders. We've got a couple of pieces of shell, abalone, etc. So that's just the basic stuff we've got here. Um, 
waiting for these supplies to come, I also got a lot of other supplies, obviously, well, I'll tell you what I'll do, let me just show you just some of the other supplies that I've bought, made, whatever, so let's take a look at them. So, let's just run through some of the supplies that I'll be needing, I'll be using, etc. Um, we've got some masking tape there for, well, as it says, for masking off. We've got um, some spatulas. These came in sort of three sizes, this one and two of these, so they're too wide. So what I've done is actually cut one down to make it a little bit more sort of usable. Um, we've also got this, this metal spatula here. Um, obviously a scalpel, we'll need one of them. Um, these little sticks here is, well they're what we term as, I've made them out of little bamboo sticks, sharpened them up for picking up um, sort of abalone shells, little pieces etc. Um, I've also bought a numerous, well numerous packets of these. Um, these are actually to help regulate um, humidity. So I'm going to try these, see see how they work. Now, not only that, um, we've got lots of other supplies here. We've got um, gold leaf in sheets that I'll be using. But not only them, if I bring them all these into into shot for you, and one more here. I've got all my sort of gold powders and you can see these are silver we've got gold there and they're all sort of different kinds of powders um, a lot of them are actually fine and then I've got this sort of quite sort of a large sort of powder also what we've got here is um, gold flakes so again let's just pop them to one side and what's basically all these sort of powders etc are all for different techniques so I'm not quite sure yet what I'm actually going to be doing but the supplies are there ready I've also actually made I've actually made my own charcoal powder you can see there fine powder we can use that for mixing with the Arushi or even polishing um, same with this coaling clay or china clay you can see it's a very fine powder again we can use that for polishing and for mixing adding uh, and making the Arushi thicker um, we've actually got this uh, Megaco polishing powder which I've already shown you I got it wrong I thought it was Tonotto it's not this is the Megaco which is the final sort of polishing powder um, also what we've got here let's bring these on for you we've got all different kinds of oils etc to clean and mix we've got olive oil um, we've got rapeseed oil we've got turpentine or turpentine um, we've also got perilla oil and last but not least we've got camphor oil now some of these are for cleaning brushes etc um, some of them as in with the turpentine or the camphor oil is for mixing in with the arushi now as I say it's an experimental it's a project that I'm doing so a lot of it is going to be a learning curve so I know some of these oils what they're used for um, I actually I'm actually forgotten what the perilla perilla oil is used for but no problem I've made notes etc we've got it somewhere but as I say all these different kinds of oils and the powders etc um, are used for different techniques again what technique I'm actually going to be using yet I'm not quite sure I've got a number of ideas um, but we'll uh, we'll sort of suck it and see we've also got these um, these cloths these are actually lint free cloths also to when we're applying or we're using the technique with gold powders etc we've got these 
lovely sort of soft brushes they're very fine and soft and some of you ladies may notice yes they're actually yeah they're actually makeup brushes but hopefully they'll do the trick they're very very fine very soft and they will do for when I'm working with the gold powders so we've got them we put them to one side um, last but not least there we go we've got numerous uh, brushes some of them a little bit too maybe too broad who knows maybe something like that is an ideal size um, we've got different sorts of brushes we've got very fine brushes for detailing um, like that particular one um, we've also got these what we term as rigger brushes um, they're again used for you know doing fine lines and hopefully these rigger brushes are designed to hold you know to hold the the arushi or paints or whatever so I'm hoping they're going to work okay so we've got all the different brushes I've also got other items and supplies that I'm waiting for but we're nearly there last but not least if I just take this off here there you go this is actually it's actually a slate not a slate should I say a tile a white tile and this will be my my palette if you like for putting the arushi on mixing it whatever nice and uh, flat nice and sort of cleanable if you like so that's my palette and that's it that's basically just some of the items that I'm going to be using as I say I've got other items that I'm waiting for other items I've got to to get but I think for the basics I've got everything so I'm ready I'm ready to go um, there's just one last final sort of item or yeah the, the last thing that I need is well let's show you so as I said all these lacquers and the different processes that we use the different techniques every time we apply the lacquer to the object in this particular case the pens we need to cure um, the lacquer now the lacquer it cures by temperature I believe between 20 is in 25 uh, the temperature um, we also need humidity which allows the lacquer to cure as well it cures because of the enzymes in the lacquer it cures with humidity so what I've done I found myself an old box and I've sort of modified it and this is my furo what is a furo you may ask a furo basically is a drying box so this is my drying box what I've done as I said I found an old box it had some shelves or sections so I've sort of slightly modified it if we undo the clips there for you let's open it up oops something's falling out so there we have it this is my little furrow you can see we've got a I'm not sure if it's got is it a high, I don't think it's a hydrometer or a hygrometer um, which gives us the temperature inside the box it also gives us the humidity so we can keep an eye on that I've made a little shelf in there okay we've got these little holders for the for the pens so we need I may do another couple more now when it's actually done I don't know maybe I can hold maybe half a dozen pens in there you've also noticed that I've actually sealed it around the edge so it's a nice sort of sealed unit inside but yeah this is my my photo I've not tested it yet hopefully it will work so let's close that up there we go so there we have it that is my next project I'm going to be trying to lacquer with Urushi some fountain pens whether it works or not we don't know but if you don't try you don't know 
as I said, you saw earlier, I've got all my supplies, I've got everything, not everything to be quite honest with you. I've got other things to actually look for, to buy, etc. Just little bits and bats. Um, once we've got them, we can actually begin. I've got my furrow, my drying cabinet as well. So, let's go for it. Now, before you people leave me comments to say, to say, well, can, I, can you video yourself doing it? The answer is no, because it takes a long, long time. It's a long process, applying, drying, applying, drying, applying, drying. Well, curing, should I say, rather than drying. So, I will not be actually videoing it until maybe if it does work and I get better, then maybe I will begin to do, to do, to sh well, to show you to do some videos. But what I will do, when I actually finish one, if I finish one and I'm happy with it, then yes, I will review it for you people. So, keep watching. It won't be next week, it won't be in a couple of days, because the process takes a long, long time. As I say, every layer has to cure. You know, if you actually, depending on the technique you use, yeah, each layer, and it can be many, many many layers so i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope, hope it's given you a little bit of an insight to what my next project is and don't forget leave a comment below as i say don't ask me to do videos because i won't be doing um until i'm actually competent and i'm happy with the results but in the meantime yeah as i say leave some comments please subscribe press that bell and it'll give you notifications of um, any other videos that I actually make. But now, I'll just say bye-bye for now.